on guys just want to make a quick video um, going through some of the things on my camper that I do to set it up to winterize we have a really cold front moving in it's supposed to get down to negative seven the next couple days we're supposed to have a ton of snow so I'm gonna show you some of the things that I went through double checked buttoned up on my camper to make sure I don't have any problems I have never gone through a winter with negative seven in my camper this is my second winter so I survived the first one just fine some things I learned from do's and don'ts uh, products that work well products that don't work so well so I want to kind of run through some of those things to help somebody that's wanting to live this lifestyle in the future not stress out as much as I did all right so first and foremost the most important thing for me is propane I have a company ADJ propane and um, I'm here in Missouri they're here local they come out once a month and top off my propane um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world but uh, it does a job it keeps me warm that's all I need so I can I can deal with the aesthetic of it um, as long as it does its job so they hook it all up uh, the connector hose runs back here down here and it ties into the hose that comes off of my camper so that hose normally runs to my tanks that I have here they just disconnect it and run it straight to their tank it does have a gauge on it the gauge stopped working so not gonna get the best and prettiest thing in the world but they do come I'm on a schedule they come once a month they top it off and refill it so I don't have to worry about it I've never run out of propane completely in a month's time so and now when it's getting colder I'm kind of paranoid about it a little bit so I am having them come before this uh, winter snap and top me off so they're gonna be coming and doing that soon but absolutely the most important thing propane this is a 247 bunkhouse transcend it is a four season camper so it does have extra insulation on the the underbelly of the camper so that does help during the winter i've never had it get below 68 inside the camper as long as that propane's running haven't had an issue with it whatsoever when i got the demo they did tell me and explain to me that the pipe the the duct work for the heater runs underneath the camper and the underbelly so that does provide some heating to the tanks the the black and gray tanks and your fresh water tank second most important to me is your skirting uh, most people do the styrofoam board which i have done i've had good success with it i was there was an embroidery shop in the kansas city area that i reached out to had them quote me it was going to be almost four thousand uh, dollars i don't plan on living in my camper forever so with that i didn't want to make the investment in that i can skirt my entire camper with the styrofoam board and tape and just the time it takes to do it uh, i ballpark 100 and 150 bucks I uh, salvaged what I could from last year and then bought bought additional boards this year and I will kind of go in here and show you the up close. I just took a tape measure, measured kind of the top of this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. I don't, I don't think it looks terrible. Um, it's serving a purpose so it doesn't have to look beautiful or anything so just kind of rough estimate cut the sections slap them on there I, I would tape them get it snug I, I would dig a trench of gravel as much as I could kind of wiggle it in there get it taped up get it taped up really tight to the top and then go to the next section so it went a lot quicker this year last year learning all the nooks and crannies here you can kind of see some of this is coming apart i need to retape i need to retape down here the tape does start to come loose it, it's inevitable it's kind of a constant fight as the weather changes as it gets cold as it gets hot it does expand and start to lose 
some of the stickiness you can see here as well I'm constantly taking sections and just retaping and it it does fine as long as you keep it tight enough and snug you know buttoned up as much as you can and keep that wind out of there you're going to be completely fine I have learned as far as tape goes I used 3M brand last year 3M was not the best it pretty much within a week of me putting the tape on the camper it started peeling up this year I have this Nashua brand I got it at the local hardware stop or shop and it is way stickier it holds up way better I mean I've had this up for two months now already I kind of started in early on it I had it up for two months and I just now I'm starting to get the sections where they're they're coming apart it will kind of restick but ultimately you just have to take extra tape and reapply to kind of help keep it together as you do the sections you just get the seams taken care of the other thing that has been huge in my success for this year as opposed to last year is the gravel along the bottom so once I did the the other side I literally crawled under the camper with a shovel and shoveled the gravel up along the base I took two by fours and wedged them for my tires to kind of to provide extra protection from if the wind starts blowing to to get up under there and blow any of it out because once you have one section start to come out that wind gets in there you're you're completely wrecked i took the extra time lined it with heavy flower pots under i pretty much have plywood heavy flower pots gravel pushed up along the bottom we've had some pretty significant winds this year and i have not had any issues so far i'm really happy with it i, I think this is the way to go so once i get the inside all tucked in buttoned up then i went along the outside <clears throat> And I just shovel gravel up along the bottom to keep that gap at the bottom as snug as possible. There are, it's not perfect, there are some gaps in the bottom, as you can see. But I'll just randomly keep shoveling up gravel along the bottom to help uh, keep the wind out. I've had far better success this year than I did last year. Large in part two things the gravel at the bottom the stuff supporting it on the inside and this specific tape right here i will put a link in the description on where to get this tape i did just get the styrofoam board at lowe's i believe is where i picked that up at i'll kind of do a quick run around here the back side as well and don't come for me this pipe is for my my kitchen sink it's gray water it's fine it's not hurting anything don't come for me in the comments the main things to note on the back side where your water hookup and your connections are coming in uh i have cut holes in the styrofoam and i kind of just re-tape it and peel it back as i need to because i don't leave this hose hooked up i try to keep this as sealed off as possible and I only undo it when I have to drain it and I go from there. But I kind of just throw some tape on top. I mean, from a distance, you can't tell. It's fine. It doesn't look that terrible. I don't keep it hooked up on that, that side. But it does keep the wind out of there. That is the biggest thing is keeping the wind out, keeping it sealed up as tight as possible. I did put that plywood up. We had kind of a crazy storm that came through in this section here. There was a pretty decent gap at the bottom, so I just re-put gravel up along the bottom and then just put that up there to try to help block some of the wind. Now my black tank and my it has my shower and my kitchen or my bathroom sink comes out of this. I leave it hooked up just because it's so much easier uh, to drain and not have to re-hook it up. I try to deal with the black uh, tank hose as little as possible to not have to hook it up and disconnect it and all that i do keep the valves closed on this area once you open everything up drain it always do your black tank first then do your shower and sink water 
close everything down and then I reapply the tape to kind of seal it up and that just keeps it all closed. You don't want water running through this hose and freezing in there because you could have an issue. That's another winter tip there. Just keep everything sealed up and closed off unless you're act actively draining it. As far as the rest of the, the skirting, I had an issue with the bumper last year trying to cut and fit it around perfect. I said to heck with all that this year and I kind of just boxed around it. So I have the full section at the bottom and then I just took the little strips I had left over and leaned them up and just taped it and sealed it up really tight. That was another area where it was kind of had a decent sized gap. So I threw the plywood and two by four. Again, I've had no issues since then. But little gap down here, it's not gonna kill anything. I just try to throw some more gravel up uh, if I start noticing spots like that. But you can see where I've thrown extra tape up that's come apart and you just redo it and it comes apart but that Nashua tape is 100% 100 better than the other stuff that I used so next we'll talk about kind of the basement area and a couple other things that I've done there so this side of the basement area I could be doing overkill uh, may not be completely necessary but I have noticed a difference in my thermometer under here when I do keep the styrofoam up. So I just cut and fit a piece of styrofoam to this opening. It is a bit of a mess. It was cold out. I did the water. I just wadded it up and threw it in there. So don't judge me, please. But I uh, put another little piece of styrofoam here to protect this area that comes up from under the camper. This cord here I'm showing, I have gone ahead because I'm paranoid a little bit about negative seven. Since I haven't experienced that cold of weather in this, I don't want to deal with freezing pipes, anything. I put, I peeled this back, opened it up a little bit, put a space heater in there and ran the cord up through here. So on those nights when it is going to hit negative seven, I'll come in here and plug it up and let it run. It's already set up to run. Cautionary things with that though, make sure you have a heater that it has the, the tip protection if it does fall, that it's going to shut off. Uh, I try not to use it unless I absolutely have to. I don't want to have to worry about it, any kind of fire hazard. There's nothing under there that will catch fire, it's just gravel. So I've made sure to clear out leaves, anything like that, don't leave under there. Could be an issue. The next thing, it's not necessarily a must-have, but it absolutely gives you a peace of mind. I will try to put a link in the description for these as well. These are the Govi Home Thermometers. It's a hydrometer as well. I have four of these all throughout my camper. It lets you Bluetooth to your phone. And if it is really cold, if I'm worried about what it's doing under the camper, I will pull it up on my phone so I can kind of monitor and keep track of what's going on under there i have one under here i placed one under the pipe here as well it, it's about halfway in and it's attached to the sewer pipe uh it it just monitors the temperature underneath even without running a heater for this particular camper with it being skirted the lowest temperature we've had this year thus far has been about 19 and it never got below freezing under the camper. So with that skirting under there blocking the wind, it does make a huge difference. It's That's probably the most important thing. That's the one thing about this particular model is the Furion AC and heater. The actual thermometer in the camper, I will show you a different video, is up in the air conditioner. So it doesn't read the temperature of the camper are the best. So I keep that thermometer in my kitchen to see where I'm at on there. I do have a way to fix that and try to help with that and I will make a video about that in the future because I have a, had a couple small issues with that particular air conditioner but I will post a video on that later. But I keep track of the temperature from under the camper, the basement, and inside at all times during the winter. 
anyway, if you have any questions, holler, ask. I'd be happy to answer them. I'd be happy to give any feedback. I'm not an expert on any of this stuff, but I do know what works for me and I do know what hasn't worked for me. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to do more videos definitely through the winter about my camper living full time. And I do fishing videos. That's more going to be coming in the spring besides the unboxings. But I do winter camping, backpack camping with my best friend. We're trying to plan a trip. So if you're interested in those kind of things, seriously consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Oh, so did you get kicked out of the camper because you're stinky? Oh, so. Are you going to help make a video about living in a camper in the winter? Are we going to survive, bud? If anything, he'll keep us warm.